procurement um, and hosted by Greenstone and, and Gripper. Um, just to start with, uh, I'm delighted to be able to introduce Meryl Planter, who's managing partner at Gripper. Uh, Meryl can provide you with further introductions, but Gripper are a, a Dutch partner of Greenstone who are looking to build on traditional procurement methods by providing more efficient ways of addressing the latest procurement challenges. Um, and then uh, there's me, Giles Scott Hayward, um, Head of Supplier Portal at uh, Greenstone, um, which helps organizations with environmental, social and supply chain uh, reporting. And uh, you'll be stuck with me again later in the webinar as I take you through um, some of the, the ways we can embed sustainability into the procurement processes. So um, let's begin. We have 30 minutes for the webinar um, and we'll be addressing the increasingly ubiquitous role of, of sustainable procurement in helping companies achieve better performance. Um, sustainable procurement is a result of the wider need for companies to not only understand and manage their impact on society and the environment, but also a need to maintain competitiveness and compliance in what is a changing commercial environment. Um, I think everyone will be aware, but supply chains represent an enormous potential impact for companies, be it from the sheer level of finance transfer, local working conditions, or greenhouse gas emissions. Sustainable procurement should be a recognition that the supply chain represents not only an area of risk for companies, but also an enormous opportunity for a positive impact. So in today's webinar, we'll hear from Meryl regarding uh, the way in which procurement is changing uh, and how this lends itself to more efficient ways of working. I will then look at how we can begin to integrate sustainability in procurement and the role that software can play in this. Uh, we'll finish with a quick question and answer, so please enter any questions in uh, the relevant question area that you should find available in your uh, webinar control panel. So I'll hold up, hand over to uh, Meryl now, and uh, she can provide you with, um, with further introductions and hopefully some interesting insight. Oh, there we go. Good morning. My name is Meryl Plant, and in the next couple of minutes, I would like to take you through a number of global trends that will have their influence on procurement and your procurement organization and how you can respond to them to make procurement more sustainable within your company. Yes, here we go. First, we would like to tell you a little something about Gripper. In April 2017, the McKinsey report came out with the conclusion that the degree of optimization within procurement was substantially lower than for other company processes. According to the report, about 56 of all procurement activities could be automized using standard software from the cloud. And you might have a feeling with this, uh, sourcing trajectories with piles of paper, contracts with manual approvals, supplier information, which is not up to date, purchase orders without delivery statements or invoices based on, well, nothing. So a digitization step is really necessary and urgent. And using this knowledge, we founded Gripper Procurement, which is a consulting firm with e-procurement experts. And today we will discuss six global trends that have a strong influence on procurement and procurement departments and the approach towards procurement. And together with the answer that procurement can have on these trends. So the first trend I'd like to discuss with you is risk control. Think about rules and regulations, a new GDPR, a stronger environmental laws, or the Brexit. There is a formalization, but what are the consequences for the supply chain and for the labor market? Take cybersecurity. It will be more important than physical protection. How do you keep your data safe? Uh, and other, of course, other global developments that make better supplier risk profiles really necessary. Another trend that we see is corporate social responsibility. Procurement will have a more and more leading role when it comes to ethical behavior throughout the whole supply chain and to protect 
uh, company reputation. And procurement has to provide more sustainable solutions for people, planet and profit. And think about, for example, ethics in sourcing when you're working with ingredients or materials or when you're working with No Slavery Act or ethics in procurement. For example, the criticism that procurement departments receive on squeezing out suppliers for lower prices. Or ethics in supply chain. Think about efficiencies in the last mile or reduction of wrapping materials. And you, as a procurement department, are expected to offer compliance support or suppliers to the rest of your company. So to these trends, we actually see an answer from procurement, which lies in contract management and supplier portals. Using the cloud-based central database of contracts, using dynamic contracting with your suppliers, your buyers and your end users. And contract management might even be a too simple term to use. You might even use a good document management system or a supplier library, so to say, in combination with a supplier portal to monitor all your agreements with all your suppliers with his, his or her certificates and tasks to, monitor, to uh, check upon them and using the integration with a supplier portal for self-service by your supplier to have your supplier keep all his information up to date and your contract manager to have the contract information up to date. The next trend that we see occurring is the shout or the cry for simplicity. Because in a more and more complex world, this cry is increasing. And that means not below the hood of the automobile, but the visible part, like simple targets like cost advantage or cash flow improvement. And simple displays for your CEO with a lack of time. Simple because the information needs to be understandable in one glance. And the fourth trend that we see is innovation. So innovation combined with cost reduction or innovation for product development or innovation to reduce risks, the ones that we just saw in trend one, or technological innovation. The question, do we have an app for this? The fifth trend we see is cooperation. Cooperation between companies, between suppliers, cooperation through systems and through portals. And the sixth trend is people, because did you know that by the end of 2020, the millennials are over 50% of our workforce? They are coming and they have more interesting in toolings and more soft skills than the current working generation. And next to this, we have a real war of talent going on. It's very difficult to get the right people. And if you have them, it's extremely difficult to hold them. So you have to stay interesting as a company. We're in a hot market and you cannot offer repetitive manual administrative activities to them anymore. And moreover, a large number of companies has already said goodbye to all administrative support. You're your own secretary, you're your own office planner, you're your own administrator. So software has to enlighten us in all these administrative tasks. No manual activities anymore. And we see on top of that, a movement from operational technical level to tactical strategic level. And our answer to that, simplicity, innovation, cooperation, and a new generation, ask for a do-it-yourself supplier management portal. Portals like this offer the opportunity for the whole company to share valuable information with their suppliers to manage this and develop innovations the supplier enters his own information and keeps it up to date and you can enter kpis with respect to your supplier information centrally stored and ready to monitor at any time for example uh, the percentage that is assigned to your green policy or your no slavery act and you need a communication portal to use for example to communicate your no gift policy so in summary we saw six global trends that have a very strong influence on procurement, procurement departments, and how you approach procurement at this moment. We saw risk control, corporate social responsibility, innovation, simplicity, people, and cooperation. And in all six trends, we see that the procurement answer lies in a better di digitization, starting with a 
digital contract management and supplier management. And now I'm handing over back to Giles. Take it over from here. So thank you, thank you very much indeed for that, Mel. Um, very visual slides that you have there put mine to shame. Um, yeah, so that was a, a very nice insight into into the sort of macro trends of uh, procurement that we don't uh, necessarily see on a, on a day to day basis here. Um, and hopefully we'll see now that all of the trends you've covered can actually represent um, a more sustainable approach. To procurement when when addressed. So, before we look at how we integrate sustainability into your procurement processes, uh, I just wanted to start by quickly recapping on on how we define sustainability. Put simply, if a business cannot be maintained, then it is unsustainable. And by failing to acknowledge the changing regulatory landscape and changing stakeholder expectations, as examples then this is exactly what a business can become. So procurement is particularly impacted right now by the changing responsibilities being placed on businesses. There is an increasing expectation that organizations should be managing their supply chains more responsibly. This is to understand who your suppliers are, to mitigate any risks to your own organization, and to affect a positive change. So before we progress, I just wanted to reinforce that a sustainable business does not just address the environment, but also the economic and social footprints and government governance practices of, uh, of a company. Merrill already referred earlier to the triple bottom line, people, planet, profit. This is what we are looking to embed within procurement. When we work with, uh, with new clients, it's important to understand how mature a company is in terms of sustainable procurement. Effectively, have the company engaged with a sustainability agenda that is relevant to their organization, so material? And if so, how far along this journey have they come? From our perspective, the supplier portal software we deploy can be used at any stage of this process. But how you use it and to maximize your benefits is dependent on, on your level of maturity. And PwC produced this maturity model in relation to embedding sustainability into procurement. Uh, and it's a really useful checklist for, for organizations looking to understand their next steps in this area or indeed their present state. The first obvious point to make is that creating a truly sustainable procurement function within a business is not an immediate action, but rather an iterative process with incremental changes eventually creating a new outlook in even the most immature businesses. The second point is that there are two key streams that need to be tackled, that of engaging your suppliers and the potentially more tricky task of engaging and galvanizing your own organization, without which it's counterproductive to approach your suppliers at all. So from our experience, and this is reinforced in, in this model, is that the most appropriate first steps when embarking on the process of trying to create a more sustainable supplier practice is to first focus on, on risk and compliance. This should include an understanding of, of where your company is exposed and an understanding of legislation and an up-to-date supplier code of conduct that is embedded into the contracting process. This creation of a, of a base level uh, of compliance minimizes immediate and obvious risks and provides a basis for you to advance into more focused areas, perhaps focusing on geographical legislation or particular uh, service categories um, of suppliers and, and content areas and certifications that may relate to that. But we find uh, with all with all people that adopting this, these processes that uh, that this is usually the point that we start at, and certainly with uh, with the more immature organisations. As we have said though, 
uh, without the buy-in of your own organization, engaging suppliers is futile. Uh, this is due to the level of collaboration required across the different business areas to create a meaning level of, of integration within a process such as um, you know, sustainable procurement. Um, so it's important to remember that before, well, until you've got your own house in order, it's not worth engaging the supply chain and it can certainly be counterproductive or detrimental um, if you do so. So what are the benefits of, of integrating sustainability into procurement? Well, longer term supplier relationships. Hopefully these relationships become more meaningful and more collaborative and hopefully more economical. It enables you to focus on long-term risk and opportunity rather than just short-term benefits that uh, in the long term don't deliver such good business returns. It gives you an opportunity to be an industry leader. Um, I think the base level uh, of which companies sit at is always increasing, but there is always an opportunity to be an industry leader and increase your competitiveness. By creating this integrated approach and uh, collaborating across the business, um, you're proving yourself to be more adaptable uh, and that can help you be uh, ahead of regulation. You can have a more engaged workforce. It's a competitive world. Merrill mentioned the same thing. Uh, it, it can only enhance uh, your ability to hire, um, to have an engaged workforce. Um, reduce risk. So delivery non-compliance, better visibility decreases your operational risk. Better transparency can decrease your reputational risks. Um, and finally, an opportunity to have a, a positive impact on society. I think also if we, if we revisit Merrill's trends that she covered earlier, um, then we can see that having an holistic approach to procurement puts companies in a stronger position to absorb change uh, and to benefit from it and from these potential changes. So I won't go into all of them in detail, but just to, to revisit um, a couple of things that Merrill talked about, I mean, risk control, as discussed earlier, sustainability is also about maintaining relevance and having processes in place to deal with these risks. Merrill said Brexit, for example, an adaptable supply chain with no single points of failure is a result of having more sustainable procurement processes. Uh, GDPR is a big focus on data security. This is a fundamental part of having a more responsive and responsible supply chain. Um, if we look at innovation, um, adaption uh, or the ability to adapt is at the heart of adopting new strategies. Um, so showing a willingness to change. Um, people, we've already touched on this with an engaged workforce, but better engagement, better management uh, creates a more desirable work workplace and cooperation. In procurement, if that's a trend in procurement, that cooperation um, and the ability or requirement to cooperate uh, between suppliers, between organizations, uh, across your own organization, uh, then you're in a better place to, to benefit um, from that. So, I'm not sure if you, uh, well, if you have read our two blog pieces on uh, sustainable procurement, then uh, you'll be familiar with these five practical steps that we've pulled together. If you haven't read them, then you certainly should. Um, they'll be uh, on the Greenstone website, on our blog, and uh, also I, I think you'll probably be able to, to find them on the Gripper website as well. So we don't need to revisit these steps in, uh, in great detail, but suffice to, suffice to say, uh, they're not extensive, but represent some accessible starting points for engaging your suppliers and then, importantly, utilizing the data. So, uh, you know, we talked about engaging your own organization. It's a vital first step and key to doing anything before, before advancing further. Um, engaging your supply chain, so be it uh, speaking with your suppliers, gathering relevant information and documentation um, is vital, but then also using that information and finding a process uh, uh, and, a, and a consistent way of evaluating suppliers and then the workflows around utilizing that data. So um, it's, it's important to, to, uh, to getting 
extracting value from the whole process is how you use the data. So finally, I just wanted to, to quickly highlight the role that software, uh, in our case, it's our supplier portal solution, but obviously um, for, for some of you attending, there may be other solutions. Um, and the role that uh, it has to play in facilitating everything that we've been through today. So um, Supplier Portal has a number of core elements that can be applied to, to any organization uh, to enhance current systems and processes or as a standalone management tool. So the, the aim of the system is not to reinvent the wheel. Um, it's not like we're suddenly inventing procurement. You know, people have been uh, procuring goods and services for a very long time. As Mel said, it's just a different way of working uh, in, in the world nowadays. And, and this applies to procurement. And with Supplier Portal, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to apply a solution to your current processes. And if you have current systems in place, then to align and integrate with those systems. Um, and so some of the, the key areas of supplier assessments, we, we provide the ability to distribute them in a targeted manner to uh, certain categories or geographies of suppliers. And, and that could be best practice, standard assessments uh, based on the frameworks that are out there um, across different subject matters. Uh, or indeed, it can be unique and bespoke to, to your own organization. Um, the key fundamental part of Supplier Portal is, is about uh, analyzing, evaluating, and, and managing uh, the suppliers and their information. We have a number of tools to do that, reporting tools, compliance tools, scoring tools, and risk tools. Um, and then the ability to, uh, to manage your suppliers directly, um, integrate with other systems, so you have the benefit of a full suite of information on your suppliers, not not segmented, um, you know, siloed approaches. Um, so if we just look at um, a couple of the uh, elements here that can then support most pertinently what we what we've spoken about today. So we've looked at, at supplier assessments. As I said, they can be best practice or bespoke but also built around things like codes of conduct, which have come up a number of times today. Um, and that can be just ensuring that all of your suppliers uh, attest or agree to a code of conduct. And I know it's a basic level of compliance, but this is what we talked about as a, as a good starting point for um, the process of embedding sustainability or, or a more responsible way of working with suppliers. Uh, in more detail, it, a code of conduct can be broken down uh, to represent its individual parts, and you can then ensure that you have compliance with each individual clause in your code of conduct by embedding that as a, as a unique questionnaire and into the system. Scorecards and flags, we talked about a consistent methodology, a consistent way of assessing suppliers, but also an efficient way of doing it. So the whole idea of, of moving solutions online is that you can automate currently manual processes, hopefully have greater levels of compliance and a, and a more efficient way of interrogating the data. Things like scorecards and risk flags are, are ways to do that. Um, and again, that can be unique uh, scoring methodologies to you or, or best practice that can be provided. Uh, and then finally, I just want to touch on, on the audit process um, as another way of providing uh, a level of rigor um, and also you know, an audit log of any reviews that you're doing with suppliers. And, and we do this in a number of ways in the system. Uh, again, it can be a uh, unique methodology to the way you work to replicate current supplier review or audit processes. Uh, it can integrate with other third-party audit programs that you're running. So you can import automatically all of your audit activity that's going on across the business. Um, and corrective action management plans that are associated uh, naturally the results of those audits. Um, so that's just a little insight into, into the role that, that uh, software can play. Obviously, we can provide more information on that at any point in time, so please just, please just ask. Um, and also, if you want any more advice or, or further detail on anything that I've been through, just um, I know it's at a high level, it's not gonna solve everyone's problems or create a, uh, an immediate sustainable procurement function, but hopefully it gives you an idea of, of what people are, are doing. 
So um, we've got a few minutes now for some questions. So Meryl, are you still are you still there? Yes, I'm still there. Wonderful. Okay, so let me just gather my thoughts and have a little look at the question box. Um, so whilst I'm doing that, well, I'll start with with one of my own anyway, Meryl, from from what you covered. Um, I was just wondering, you covered six broad themes today, um, which were, were expansive, but I was wondering if there was a particular pinch point for organisations or problem area that they mean that the means they come to to Gripper for help. So, you know, is it the risk factor where where organisations are just more and more aware that there are unknown risks in their supply chain and 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 they need help identifying that, or is it just things have got too complicated and, like you said, simplicity is is a massive driver now, um, and they come to you to to make things more efficient. Well, yeah, simplicity definitely is one of the drivers, but what we see overall that these trends result in a shifting role of procurement to more and more proactive. It's demanded by the organization, so to say. And when they're within this shift and they feel the urge that they need to change, companies come to us for consultancy on how to support a shift with the right balance of tooling, the right processes and training their people the right way. Okay. So yeah, it, it, uh, it's not a one size fits all approach, but uh, just a, a kind of uh, an assessment based on requirements and, and you have the different tools to deliver that. Um, I guess it, it's similar from our perspective as well when it comes to, to looking at that maturity model and saying, okay, what needs to be done or what needs to be applied to improve the current, the current processes. Um, okay, we've got one question here on, on the code of conduct. Um, for you, Meryl, I guess is more appropriate than, than for us. Um, so we talked about the supply code of conduct. Do you have any experience in creating one? And what are the subjects of a, of a good code of conduct? If we just combine two questions there. Yeah, yeah, we do have experience in creating codes of conduct. Although I have to say the code of conduct is very industry specific. Uh, but what we typically see in a code of conduct is subjects like labor, health and safety is addressed, environmental demands are addressed, of course, ethics. Uh, but what we see more and more is a, uh, a standpoint on finance, how, how sustainable finance financially are you, and KPIs, of course, and how, how you do the reporting back to the company. Okay. And, okay, just to add to that, so uh, just thinking aloud here. So the, from our perspective, when we implement code of conduct into the software, uh, be it either through questionnaires or attestations, and, and we push for it as a starting point as well. So we see it very much as a, a compliance exercise and a, and a tick box. From your perspective, Meryl, being a bit more hands-on in creating these codes of conduct and effectively ways of working with suppliers, do, do you see them affecting any change uh, or improvement in processes across the supply chain or is it merely just uh, a tick box exercise? Well, it starts often from the idea of a tick box exercise, but then they find out that they really, that the companies really want to live through all the uh, subjects that are in the code of conduct, conduct. So it becomes more and more important for the company itself as well. Okay, great. Um, okay, so I think we've got time for, for one last question. Um, so, uh, so the next actually this leads on from a code of conduct. So after creating a code of conduct, the next step is to perform a consistent supplier assessment is what you mentioned. So how do I do that? Um, well, from our perspective, I, I'll answer that from the, from the Greenstone perspective. I mean, the code of conduct, as we said, represents a base level of compliance, um, i.e. all suppliers attest to this. It's embedded in our, you know, in the contracting process. Um, but a consistent assessment should take all elements of a supplier record into account. And I guess it's dependent on what other supporting information that you're gathering, evidence documents, whether you're reviewing those documents, certifications for certain 
uh, supplier services uh, if, if required, uh, certain standards, the question requirements that you're placing on suppliers. So they all need to be distilled uh, into a comparable data set. So I think we, we touched on it a little bit with the, with the scorecards, but it's about saying, um, okay, what's a comparable data set across a comparable set of com suppliers? Um, and it's likely that you want to compare performance or drive improved performance uh, within a, a segment of your supply chain or, or a category of suppliers. So what are the KPIs that relate to the information that we're looking at? Um, and then how do we score or audit against those KPIs and you do it in, in a consistent manner on a regular basis and either you put suppliers into uh, a change plan or you put them on a audit holiday or a scoring holiday for another year uh, and then you review the data again next year. So I think it, it depends on what data you're gathering, but you need a consistent um, methodology for distilling that data into something that you can act upon. And it, hopefully it doesn't need to be complex, certainly um, initially anyway. Lovely. All right. Do you have anything to, to add, Meryl? Um, we, I just will say we'll, we'll answer any further questions offline and we will uh, distribute the uh, recording of the webinar and the slides, obviously, to, um, to all attendees. Well, the only thing I can add, Giles, is thank you for hosting this. <laughs> Wonderful, no problem at all. Well, yeah, thank you very much, Meryl, indeed. It's, um, yeah, to, to give the expert view on, uh, uh, on things. So thanks for joining. Um, and thanks, everyone, for, for listening. Um, and do get in touch if you've, if you've got any questions at all. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.